Okay. So um, in order for us to integrate the Sophos firewall into the Active Directory, so we want to quickly set up an AD server. Um, we're using Windows Server 2012 for this demo. Um, any Windows server can do this, uh, 2016, 2019. Uh, they give you the same solution. So this is just a standalone server. So we've not really configured anything on this server. Um, to confirm it, uh, if we get to the command prompt of this server and do net accounts, net accounts is going to show us uh, that this computer rule is just a server. Okay, so um, it's not specific yet on which type of server because we've not configured it to become a particular type of server. So we are just going to the top right hand side here, manage, add roles and features, and the role we'll be adding will be Active Directory Domain Services. Um, that's the role we are going to add. So um, go to next, and um, we eventually get to where we select ADDS. Server IP is 172.16.16.20. Uh, the Sophos firewall is 172.16.16.16 and we've confirmed that the server is able to read the Sophos box. Server name is DC, that is Domain Controller 1. And uh, we'll go to next and here we select uh, the second option, Active Directory Domain Services, add all the features that will help us create an Active Directory server. Next, 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 and then we install. Um, so hit on install. And um, once this installation is completed, we'll come back um, to complete the setup. All right, so the um, Active Directory Domain Services installation has completed, and you can see the link at the center of the page that says promote the server to the domain controller. Um, if we mistakenly close this page, we can still get back to that link by going to notification icon here, and we'll still get the link, promote the server to a domain controller. Click on the link. Uh, the domain controller promotion page opens uh, where we have to answer a couple of questions here. All right. So now, first off, we need to select a new forest. We don't have any existing domain infrastructure on our network. So this is the first domain. So we are selecting a new forest and we need a domain name for us to be able to install an Active Directory domain services. In this case, we are using fibertrain.net as our domain name. So yeah, so once the domain name is entered, uh, we should be able to go to next, right? So click on next and um, just hold on yeah so the forest functional level here is windows server 2012 r2 and then the domain functional level is also the same thing if we have older server on our network like windows server 2008 we might want to drop the for forest functional level here uh, to 2008 so that uh, this server will be able to uh, support older server so for backward compatibility we might have to drop the forest functional level um, as low as the oldest server we have on our network. But if we have uh, no older server, and this 2012 is the least we can have on our network, then we are going to leave it the way it is. Okay, so um, you can see what I've already mentioned. Um, you see 2008 server, 2008 R2, uh, but we don't have any server lower than 2012, so we're leaving it the same way. Uh, when you make a server a domain controller, that server automatically becomes a DNS server. And uh, the server is also a global catalog. Um, here, down here, we we'll have to enter our directory services restore mode password. So when your server, when you run into issue, uh, maybe somebody accidentally delete a, um, organization, an organizational unit, you might want to restore it by booting the server into directory services restore mode password, uh, restore mode rather. And when you get to that mode, you'll be required to enter um, whatever password you put here. You can use same administrator's password or Microsoft recommend you use something else um, as your directory services restore mode password. So once that is done, we'll hit the next button and the server is looking up for a DNS server on the network. Um, so it's not going to see anyone because this server will eventually be our DNS server. So we'll just go to next and uh, the NetBIOS domain name here will be Fibertrain because our domain name is Fibertrain.net. So it's going to search and get the NetBIOS, uh, which is Fibertrain. Go to next. And um, the next page is going to show us the part we are setting uh, data will be stored. The database folder will be in Windows NTDS, uh, same as the log file, and the SysVol, of course, is in the SysVol folder. So if you want to change any of the location of this database, you can browse to a new location. For us, we are leaving it the same way. We'll go to next, and um, yeah, if you are interested in PowerShell, these are scripts that could be used in the PowerShell to achieve the same purpose. Uh, for now, we just have to close it and go to next, and next, next our way until the install button is highlighted.
So we we'll click on install and then the domain controller installation will start. Um, so we just have to wait for this system to respond. And now we can go ahead and click on the install button and the installation is going to begin. And after the installation is completed, we're going to come back and begin to set up our Active Directory infrastructure. All right, so now the um, ADDS configuration is completed. We rebooted the server. And on the left hand side, you could see we have ADDS, which is uh, Active Directory Domain Services. And um, so it's already installed. To confirm this, we'll go to Manage once again, Add Roles and Features. And we'll go to Next and Next and Next again. And you're going to see that uh, ADDS already installed and alongside DNS server. So the domain controller server automatically acts as a DNS as well. So now that the ADDS has been installed, we need to quickly create resources or users, groups. Uh, so the idea is that the usernames, uh, the users we have in the AD uh, will be integrated into Sophos. So people with the ID credentials could be authenticated into Sophos firewall and they should be able to have access to the internet. Um, to do that, we need to go to tools at the top right hand side. We need to first of all create a, a, a structure, the organizational structure. Uh, so we are going to Active Directory Domain Services. Sorry, Active Directory Users and Computers. Um, this is a domain here, which is fibertrain.net. Right click on this domain and point to new. And we are going to create an organizational unit. And this will be the company OU and every other thing will fall under this OU. So this is Fibertrain Limited. Uh, that is the uh, company OU and um, click on OK. And so if we expand our domain, we should be able to see the fiber train. Under the fiber train, we don't have anything. So right click on that fiber train, we'll go to new and we are going to organizational units. So this will be fiber train employees. And that will be another sub OU under the fiber train. So all our employees will find their way uh, inside fiber train employee. And we're also going to create fiber train computers. Um, so another OU and fiber train computers like laptops, desktops, and fiber train servers will be inside these uh, fiber train computers. Uh, so we'll click on OK. And then under fiber train OU, we're going to create a subdomain, sorry, a sub OU. In this case, uh, we're going to name this one sales. And we're going to click on OK. And so all the sales users, the account will be created under sales OU. And as many departments as we have, we are going to create OU for each of the departments. So we can have marketing. And we can also have HR. And we'll go on and on and on until all the departments have OU created for them. Um, so we can have HR. And we can have uh, we already entered sales. So we could have admin. could also have finance. So let's just end at uh, five departments under fiber train employees. And uh, so we just say uh, uh, do one thing, uh, create just one test account uh, under sales. This is finance. And then under fiber train computers, we could create a use for where our laptops, our desktop will be. So we can have laptops. So all, all our laptops will be found under the laptops OU and all the desktops will be found under desktop OUs. So this will help us to quickly locate either user or a computer that we want to uh, pinpoint from the Active Directory. So these are where our de desktops will be and we could create another OU for our printers, for our servers, etc, etc. So um, we're just setting up stuff on the Active Directory. So we could have our servers also here. So under, let's create one more department for ICT. So we have ICT and I'm going to create a two staff under ICT. Uh, so under ICT, we'll just quickly create um, right click, um, right click and go to new and we'll select a user. So this user will be Shim and the last name, uh, let's say Abola. And user logon name will be Shim. And then we'll go to next and we're going to put what the password is, triple uh, A one 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 hash. We'll confirm the password, triple A one 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 hash. All right, so we'll say user for now cannot change password password never expires. So we've created a test user. We want to see if we can use this user account here. Nobody at Bearing Shame has been created inside the Sophos. So when we get into authentication to Sophos, we should be able to be authenticated using Shame as a username. Uh, so now um, we can do, begin to create other users in each of the departments that those users belong. 
And uh, once all those things are done, but for now, just for testing purposes, we want to integrate this guy to AD, uh, sorry, to the Sophos box. So I think we are good to go. We'll have a couple of departments here. Uh, maybe under um, sales could also create one user. So we'll have two users, one in sales, one in ICT. And this user will be John. And um, last name would also be John. And user logon name, John. And we'll go to next and we'll put a password. All right, so we'll say password never expires. We know that if we are doing this um, for our employees, we have to leave it on user must change password so that they will be prompted to change to something else when they are logging onto their system. So we have an active directory infrastructure now. And so let's jump in to the Sophos box. So to do that, we actually have a remote desktop connection to the server. So we have to minimize the remote desktop. So get back to the Sophos box. Uh, already the Sophos is 172.16.16.16, while the AD server is 172.16.16.20. So the Sophos is 172.16.16.16, while the AD server is 172.16.16.20, and the Sophos is able to ping um, the AD server. Uh, Why the AD server? Okay, um, we need to log in back into the firewall. Our session has expired. All right, so um, having logged in back into the firewall, we'll do a ping from the firewall to the AD server, and uh, we'll see if the firewall is able to talk to the AD server. And surely enough, the firewall can talk to the AD server. And we'll go back to the AD server and we'll open the command prompt. Just right click on the Windows icon here and we'll go to command prompt. And let's see if from the AD point of view, if we can read the Sophos box. Sophos is 172.16.16.16. And sure enough, uh, both of them can talk to each other. All right. So um, we have been able to get the Active Directory set up. We have our OUs and we have a couple of users created. And we are going to end this tutorial here. And when we we'll come back here again, uh, we are going to start to integrate the Sophos box uh, to uh, use the AD credentials to allow people to authenticate to the firewall. That is what we call single sign-on or SSO. Thank you so very much for joining in, in this presentation. I'll see you in our next tutorial.